please give a warm Chattanooga welcome to Mr. Michael Pollan. It's an endlessly fascinating subject. I mean, you can look at food anthropologically, historically, scientifically. That's a hard mindset to change, but I think there are ways to do it. I was asked to write a, a book about, you know, how should people eat? And, I, and it, I only came up with seven words, which is very alarming to a writer. Um, <laughs> eat food, not too much, mostly plants. All you need to know, you could get up and leave. Except, I have to tell you what food is. <laughs> And I realize you have to unpack those seven words. Well, this book, I, I think, is just a fantastic education, and every American should read it. What he's teaching is how connected we all are and how connected our food system is to our health. It's great to be in a part of the country where the food problem, so-called, is so acute. I learned today that you guys are number two on the list of most obese states. But it's also a place where the food solution is so near at hand. I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing. I mean, there's a really interesting local food scene getting started. You have amazing farmland that's very close by, actually, compared to some metropolitan areas. The challenge is the infrastructure and also persuading the, uh, the consumer that what he or she is getting for the premium price of uh, sustainably raised food is really worth it. I'm not going to talk about agriculture very much. I want to start at the other end of the food chain. We've really been seduced as a nation into an expectation, almost a right, to dirt cheap food. But with food, as with everything else, you do get what you pay for. We're spending less than 10% of our income in America on food. It's important to understand that's less than anywhere else on this planet. And that's less than any other time in history. And the money that we're saving on that cheap food, we're spending on health care in this country. And that's no accident. Those two things are connected. I think the biggest problem we have with our, our food system right now is it's providing too many of the wrong kind of calories uh, with the result that we have epidemics of chronic diseases, most of which are linked to diet. My argument to people is that, you know, quantity is, it, it's not about quantity, it's about quality, it's about pleasure. I want to encourage people to think about eating less higher quality food and you end up p spending the same amount of money eating less and being healthier. We have this wonderful opportunity now. We have these alternative food chains um, that are showing up increasingly in the supermarket, uh, even in Walmart. Things like organic, things like free range, um, things like grass fed. And it gives us choice. I think the thing to do is understand that you do have this incredible vote with your dollars now. So then the opportunity becomes to, to align your values, your priorities, what matters to you with your purchasing decisions. And I want to see if I can't clear the fog of confusion that descends when people navigate that most treacherous landscape of an American supermarket. So I came up with these rules. Avoid foods with more than five ingredients. Avoid foods with ingredients your third grader can't pronounce. Don't eat any foods that won't eventually rot. And the other thing is to get out of the supermarket entirely uh, and do some of your shopping locally. If, if people even just did, you know, 5% of, uh, of their shopping for local food, it would revolutionize the food economy. It would help preserve land all around Chattanooga. Uh, and it would result in a much healthier diet because local food is less processed. There are things I think we can do that don't cost as much as some of us think. Community and food, they go together. It's accessible. You can just show up at a, a farmer's market and, and ask a farmer. People go to the farmer's market not just to trade money for food. They go to have a certain kind of experience. I'm very excited by the kind of uh, the energies, the community energy that, that rises around local food systems. Last rule. Break the rules once in a while. It's important, I think, to cultivate a relaxed attitude toward food, not be a fanatic. What matters is not the special occasion or even those January resolutions or diets, 
but the everyday practice. All things in moderation, uh, we famously heard, but Oscar Wilde appended a nice, a nice note to it. Yeah, he said, all things in moderation, including moderation. Thank you very much. Food is a, uh, is a great way to connect to people. It connects us to the earth. It's the most important thing we do in terms of our influence on nature. We think about the way we heat our house or what kind of car we drive. It's nothing compared to our food choices. What I most care about is the human relationship to the natural world. 